Hi guys, welcome to a bit of game dev. Today I'll show you how I created this antimatter laser effect. First, let's see the elements of this laser effect separated all on their own. Okay, now that we have our laser separated, we can start with the most complicated part, which is the center line here and the squiggly lines here. The center line is made up of two quads which are intersecting, so we can see them from all angles. They are stretching in the z-axis, as you can see here. This pulsing effect is made up with shader graph. Let's open the shader now. You can see the whole shader on screen now. For the first part, let's start here. In this part, I just created this faded line, which I was too lazy to import a texture for. Use the UV node, split it into RGB values, and use the G value, invert it, and multiply it with the base G value to get this effect. Then use a smooth step node to shrink this effect and create this line. I only added a strength next to increase the intensity a little bit. Next we need to create this scrolling circle which adds an additive effect to the line. And to do that I only added a texture 2D, sampled it and scrolled it over time. The texture 2D is a faded circle. But the important part comes here. This part modifies the UVs over faded circle so it doesn't stretch with our object. Instead, it remains a fixed scale with set with our scale factor. We can see that in action here. If we scale our beam body, you can see the pulse doesn't change size, it always remains the same, no matter how far we stretch it. If we decouple this part and just change the Y offset to reset it to center and save our shader graph, we can see how the pulse became bigger. And if we shrink the laser all the way down, you can see how the pulse shrinks. If we stretch the laser all the way up, you can see the pulse gets very very large. So, because we're essentially stretching each of the two quads in the x-axis, you can see this here. We can use the object node to get our scale over quad, then split to get our x-axis and multiply it by our scale factor. The scale factor is a custom value we can change in the editor. Then we create a new vector with our y and z value set to 1 since we don't want to change the y and z scale. And then we multiply it by our vertex position node. This multiplication gives us an independent scale for our faded circle from our main object. I also set the offset of our y value to 0.5 so we have our faded circle in the middle. If we set it to 0, we can see our faded circle is at the edge, but we set it to 0.5. For the final step, we just add the two parts together and clamp it to go from 0 to 1. Then we put it in the alpha and we assign a color to our base color. The important part for our color is we set the HDR, not the default, and we set our graph settings, our blend mode to additive. In the editor, we can see if we change the scale factor to a larger value, our faded circle shrinks. If we set it to a smaller value, our faded circle increases. You can play with the values to see what fits you, but I like it like this. Now for our wavy lines, this is actually a custom cylinder mesh on which we have applied the shader graph. If we deactivate the shader graph, we can see the cylinder. It's just a plain cylinder with the top and bottom cut out. Let's open up the shader graph and see what we have in there. The shader is pretty simple, we just have a texture 2D sampled. This is a custom texture, we can see the texture here. It's just a straight diagonal line, but it also has these little two edges, so it tiles seamlessly in the Y and the X axis. Now in a shader graph, I just implemented the tiling and offset node and the offset over time by some value speed. And we can see that effect here. And we also implemented the similar system like we did in the previous shader graph, where we make the scale independent of the actual scale of the object. 
since we want to control the tiling of this texture, we will multiply the g value, that is our y value in the tiling field, and multiply it by our scale x value to get an independent tiling of our object scale, since we know our object scales in the x-axis. The r value, which is the x value in the tiling field, will remain the same and we can change it in the editor. In the end of the shader graph, we have a color property, which is also HDR. And in the graph settings, the blend mode is also set to additive, with the two sided checked. In the editor, we can see if we modify our tiling field, the effects we get. The Y value controls how far and how dense the lines are, while the X value controls how many lines there are. Ok, now that we have our shader graph systems out of the way, let's move on to the particle systems. Let's start with the antimatter source. The antimatter source is a very simple effect, it only contains two particle systems. The first, which is the faded circle in the middle, and the circles which spin around it. For the faded circle in the middle, we're using the universal render pipeline particles unlit shader, and we set the blend mode to additive, and we turn on the emission field and set the emission to this purplish color. Next for the particle system, we set the lifetime to 1 and the speed to 0, and we play around with the size, I set mine to 0.6. Then for the emission we set it to 2, and we activate the color over lifetime and set it to fade in and out. Now for the circles, we also have a universal render pipeline particles unlit shader, the surface type to transparent, blending mode to additive, render face to both, so we have a better effect. And the emission activated, with the field set to a purple color. Now for the actual particle system. We set the lifetime to 1 and the start speed to 0, the start size to 0.8, or whatever you feel is comfortable. And the start rotation to random in all axes. Next we set the emission to 4 and the rotation over lifetime to separate axis and for all axis I put 360. For the laser hit effect, we have three particle systems. First is the flash effect in the middle, then we have two particle systems for the sparks. One big, one small. The flash effect uses almost the same material as the source, but the color is a little bit adjusted. As for the particle system, we have a lifetime of 0.1, the start size of 0.6 and 1.3, and the emission rate over time to 40, and then we have the size over lifetime to a upward curve, which gives us this pulsating flash effect. The sparks use a similar material as the rest of the particle system, with the surface type to transparent, blending mode to additive, the render face to both, but the texture is changed. This is the texture used for the sparks particle system. Let's activate the black layer so we can see it better. As you can see, it's just this shape with the faded edges, and a little bit of glow in the background. Let's separate the big sparks particle system, so we can see it better. Now for the particle system values, the start lifetime is 0.2, the start speed is 1.63, and the start size is a random value between 0.6 and 1.3. The start rotation is an important element, because it gives us this forward stretching effect. If we deactivate it, we'll see how the effect looks. And the values are the x is 90, the y is 0 and the z is 90. For the emission we have a rate over time to 50, the shape is a cone, and for the size over lifetime we have this upward curve which gives us this stretching effect. For the small sparks, let's see them separate. The material is exactly the same as for the big sparks, but the values for the particle system are a little bit different. We have the start lifetime of 0.5, and we have the start speed, which we didn't have in the big sparks. The start size is 0.5, the start rotation is the same, and we have the simulation speed set to 2, so the sparks fly out a little bit faster. The emission is set to 15, the shape is also a cone, and the size of lifetime is a downward curve, unlike the big sparks. Now that we have covered all the parts of this effect separately, let's see the effect combined. Thank you for watching. If you like this effect and if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.